beautiful day for camping, huh? Well, it's been a beautiful day of hiking out in the Superior National Forest. We're on Moose Lake and we're gonna set up camp. A lot of people have been camping before in the wintertime, but I do it different. I use a hammock. So I'm gonna show you how I use a hammock camping in the wintertime. Follow me. One of the biggest challenges in hammock camping is finding two trees that are the right distance apart. Now you might think in a forest there's a lot of good trees, but you gotta watch out. You don't want trees like this poking you in your back at night. So I'm gonna knock off all the snow here so that the gear inside, which is all dry right now and powder free, stays that way. My life depends on the contents of the sled tonight. I want to stay warm, happy, and have a good meal in me by the end of the night here. There we go. Good day. Well, I've got my sleeping system and some stuff, and now over here I got my stove and food and uh, some fuel. Seems like a lot, but it's pretty low density. It's real light, but I like that box because it fits in my sled just nicely. So in doing this, I want to make sure that any gear that it pulls out doesn't go in the snow. I can use this as a landing spot or I can use my box, but I don't want anything to be lost because it all matters. Got a tripod for taking pictures of the stars tonight. It should be pretty good. So in my bag here, you see I've got a sleeping system and right here is a Hennessy hammock. And you'll see it's got the snake skin on here keeps it dry. So I can take this and it's, it's pretty waterproof. It can get touched in the snow and I'm not going to worry about my bed getting wet tonight. That's very important. I'm done with what's in here for now. All this is dry gear so I'm going to close the bag so that snow doesn't get in and spoil the surprise. With a hammock, no matter what time of the year you're in, you don't want to tie the ropes directly to the tree. Because if you look at this, this is really thin braid. It's thinner than my finger. And putting this around a tree and putting all the weight on it can actually cut off the circulation of the tree underneath this bark. It can hurt it. So I use, Hennessy makes these, they send them with their hammocks. I use almost a two inch strap. And this thing goes around the tree like this. And then the rope gets tied to here. And that evenly distributes all the weight from the rope this small to this big. And you'll see it's covered in sap because I live up here in the boreal forest. There's a lot, of, a lot of big sappy trees. I always have four straps in case something gets messed up, but I'm gonna choose two here, put the rest of my bag again so I don't get lost. Take the strap, go around the tree like this. Bring the loops kind of together. Be a little bit tricky when your hands are cold. I might take a break here and there to warm my hands up in the gloves. There's no shame in that. I always tell myself everything takes longer in the winter time. Setting up camp does, cooking food, heck even waking up to go pee in the middle of the night takes longer. Just take your time. So I do this little knot here. Come on up here I'll show you this. I take my rope over like that. I come underneath and I figure eight with the webbing here. Over, under, over, under. This is gonna ensure a nice soft knot that isn't gonna pinch on my webbings. It's gonna stay strong. And most importantly, it'll be easy to undo tomorrow morning. I'm gonna open it up. Now this is a kind of a a delicate time here because I don't want snow from this tree falling into my hammock bed. It won't matter because I'm using all synthetic and the hammock is the outside of my sleeping system and any moisture that's in there should technically evaporate for me but any moisture contact that I can avoid is best. So I'm going to take and peel back the skin. Now everyone does their hammocks a little bit different. I'm just showing you how I do mine. 
I'm not saying it's the right way or the wrong way, I'm just saying it's my way, and I'm pretty darn good at it. Right. So what do we have here? Looks like a mess, huh? This is the hammock bed. This is what I actually sleep in. And this is the, the rainfly. Now I've got it all in the same snake skin, and the rainfly is also in another snake skin. The reason I do that is because in the winter summertime, excuse me, some nights I want to see the stars. I don't necessarily need the rainfly. However, I want the rainfly tonight. There's a lot of snow overhead and Believe it or not, when it's all said and done, it helps keeps you warmer. It keeps the air off the top of you. It prevents the wind from blowing the heat away from your sleeping bag that's caught up in there. Okay, so with the Hennessy, you got these nice little side things that hold the body of the hammock open that allows for more room when you sleep. Now, usually you take a stake, and you poke it in the ground, and it holds it out. But the ground's a little bit frozen right now. So we gotta do what's called making a dead man. So I found the stick dead and down in the forest. I'm gonna take my line, and go around it, kind of make a channel in the snow. Put that in there so it doesn't get lost. And I'm gonna pack snow on top of it. I'm gonna stand on it. The snow is going to crystallize into an ice formation. It's going to fuse with the ground, and that won't let go. Before I want to commit to the sleep, I want to test out and make sure that the hammock is set up properly, and then I'm not going to fall my bum in the middle of the night. So. Gonna hold my weight. It'll be a good night. So, usually at this time, I would take and open my rainfly up all the way and kind of show you how it works. And then I kind of crawl inside and assemble my sleeping system. But it's kind of a closed environment when I'm doing that, and you won't be able to see what's happening very much. So, I'm actually gonna put my sleeping system together with the rainfly off so you can see. Now, I don't want my sleeping bag touching the ground at all. It's, it's not good. It's a little bit chilly tonight, so I'm gonna use my uh, no-name endorsement sleeping bag there and another one inside of it. Two sleeping bags that'll provide a lot of warmth. It's gonna be pretty chilly tonight. Before I came out here, I looked at the forecast and we're looking at about five below in the middle of the night. Bit of a wind chill. So, I don't want to freeze. Now, this sleeping bag that I've got here, I chose specifically for hammock camping. Reason being is, in the sleeping bag itself, on the inside, is a thermo rest. I'm gonna open that up so the air can get inside. We can start lofting up and providing insulative value. Insulation is important to hammock because without it, your sleeping bag would compress to the bottom and your back would effectively be right on this fabric. Some systems you could use what's called an underquilt, which is actually a quilt that hangs below it and insulates you, but I don't have one for this yet. So what I have is a sleeping bag that is insulated. Oh, look at that, extra straps. So while that's inflating, I'm going to pull out my other sleeping bag. Making sure to put this in here. Take the loose stuff, put it in my bag so it's in my possession, not leaving a trace in the forest, keeping my gear all complete. And I'm going to take this guy. and put it inside the other sleeping bag. So I'm just gonna take one sleeping bag, and 
and shove it to the very end of this one. So now, I've got two layers. My otter bag is really big and wide. It's, it's not gonna constrict my motion at all. And this other bag here is smaller than that, but it's still big enough where I have free motion. So with two sleeping bags, I'm not going to get claustrophobic in this, in this hammock setup, but I'm gonna stay really warm. So while hanging here tonight, I'm gonna crawl in and I'm gonna put my long underwear in here right away. I'll have a water bottle filled with warm liquid, apple juice or apple cider, put in there so I can drink it through the night, but it's also gonna provide some preheat. When I crawl in though, I'm gonna quickly get into my long underwear for the night, sleeping long underwear. I like to have a, a clean set for sleeping in. So the night before I go to bed, I'm gonna crawl in here and put all of my dry gear on. So all this wet clothes I've been wearing all day, this pocket full of snow, so get emptied out. That's just day waste. My jacket's gonna come off, and I'm gonna put it in here. My snow pants are gonna come off. I'm gonna put it in here as well. And I'm gonna crawl in, take off my other base layer, which is all wet right now, and put a dry one on. Now I'm gonna crawl in the inner bag, and all my really, really wet stuff is actually gonna go in my inner bag with me, so my body heat will evaporate the moisture off of it through the bag. Now, between this layer and my outer layer, my other not so wet, but still kind of wet stuff is gonna go in there. For instance, my coat will go in there above me, my pants as well. Now my boots have boot liners in them, and they've been wet from walking all day. Those things are also gonna go in here, but I'm gonna put them underneath me. They'll provide a little bit of a good butt cushion in your sleep, and tomorrow morning they should be roasty toasty, ready to go for the day. Well, I think I'll put the uh, rain fly on, make some food, and call it a night. Thanks for listening.